Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, it's not too loud. Um, so first and foremost, when it comes to my high school days, I was that student that she was talking about earlier that didn't pay attention, that was running around. I mean, full disclosure, when she called me, when Renee, can I call you Renee? Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> when Renee called me, she said, hey, TJ, I got this great opportunity for you. Come talk to our teachers. Awesome. I said, that's great. I can't wait. I said, so why? She's like, I want to show the teachers what the worst student in high school and middle school look like. <laughs> and, and I said, all right, fair enough, fair enough, because that was the case. I mean, when I got sent to the principal's office, they would literally, you started off just one D hall, which is detention, one, two, three. They would literally get to the point they'd have to give me a paper clip and say, here, TJ, here's your agenda for the week. Here's all your D halls for the week. And I would go uh, to class and my friends would be like, where were you? Where were you at? I like, they give me a bunch of homework. It's okay. They didn't give me D halls. But I mean, to say, I say all that because I was not a good student in high school at all. It didn't click for me till I got to college, ended up graduating top 10 in my top 10% of my class this Friday. Go Bobcats, eat them up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and so it didn't click for me till I got to high school, I mean to college. But leading up to that, I had teachers along the way who kind of looked out for me. Specifically in middle school, I remember, I guess she got fed up. She said, TJ, what's going on with you? And I wasn't talking. She said, okay, I'm gonna call your mom. And that was like the worst. My heart dropped into my stomach. I said, oh no, oh no. So she called my mom and my mom's pretty, I mean, like me, I get it from her. She's pretty stubborn. She didn't want to open up. She ended up telling her at the time, about seventh grade, we were staying in a one bedroom apartment. It was me, my two brothers and her. She was sleeping on the couch. And she worked 16 to 18 hours a day. So whenever I got those D-Halls, I was like Houdini. They would just disappear. I go home, they weren't there. She didn't discipline me. She didn't, she didn't know what was going on at school because she had to provide for us and my brothers. And that's the case for, it was the case for a lot of my friends, a lot of the people who acted up in school, and I'm sure it's the case for some of your students. Now, what had happened after that is what changed my life. Instead of just saying, oh, he's just a bad kid, just move him along, he'll go to middle school, he'll go to high school, and I end up like some of my friends who right now are in jail, some are dead, I mean, that's just the reality of it. I went on to go to college. I'm sorry, I get a little. <laughs> but leading up to that, I had people who looked out for me. I had my coaches. I also uh, was able to get a scholarship to play football in Mississippi out of high school. But I wouldn't have done that if they wouldn't have pulled me to the side and said, TJ, what's going on? And to be honest, if they wouldn't have ran me after practice, I hated it. I was so out of shape. I looked like a big donut back in high school. I was just a big boy. And they would take me after practice every single day and run me and put that discipline in me. And at the time, it just didn't click. I was like, do they hate me? What's, what's going on? But it, take, it takes till now for me to see that that wasn't the case. And I tell my mom this every day. I'm like, mom, if I would have listened to you when I was 13, 14, I could have avoided so, so much. And I'm 22 now. And it's like, I could have avoided so much, whether it be girls, whether it be trying to be cool with friends. So I say all this to say that educators are the closest thing outside of a media family, at least it was for me, to role models. Educators, I call them gardeners who don't really get appreciated, right? So you plant the seeds in the students and you may not see a sprout right then and there. You may see it later on on Facebook scrolling through like, oh, he did okay. Ooh, no, he's in jail. <laughs> but you know, you, it may not click. And for some, hopefully it clicks sooner than later. That was the case for me. But for some, it may not, right? But I don't have to tell you how to do your job. I've been doing it longer than I've been. Some of, I, no, I don't know. <laughs> don't go that far but it's really just being motivated trying to inspire the kids because I it really has such a profound effect on my life if I didn't have teachers that pulled me to the side if I didn't have coaches that ran me after practice I would have ended up like my friends which most of them you know they can't say what happened with their life you hear the sad stories you know kids who grow up in my situation they go one of two ways Either they keep going down the direction they're going and they, you know, join, I mean, 
I literally had gangs talk to me almost every day, trying to get me to, you know, go off. Hey, what are you going to practice for? What's going on? I'm making a lot of money doing, you know, you know what? Why don't you do that? I could have went that way. It was easy, easy to go that way. Mom wasn't home. She worked nights. My brothers were at home. One of them's younger than me, only a year younger than me. I could have easily took that route. But instead, I had a teacher, teachers and coaches who pulled me to the side and said, they showed me in the mirror. They said, you can keep being like them. You will get there, I promise. I promise you will get to where they're going. But if you go this way, your life could be different. Do you want to be poor for the rest of your life? Do you want to see your mom struggle for the rest of your life? Having that talk, and like I said, I'm sure there are students out there that y'all have that come up in similar situations, and I hate to, uh, to sound kind of down, but it's the truth. Who come up in similar situations, and they need that kind of support. They don't have it. And so I say all this, do we have any literature teachers, any English, any, anyone at all? <laughs> Just <laughs> real quick. You, you, I know you, uh, you're pretty, you can be loud sometimes, so can, just sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> can you spell the word impossible for me? I'm bad at spelling. I'm, I'm terrible. Oh, don't spell it wrong. You can't get it wrong. Just, just spell it for me. Right, impossible. We hear it all the time. You do this, don't do this. TJ, don't start your own company. You're 22. Dell just called you. Ford just called you. Go, go, go do the internship. Can't trust your own business. TJ, you'll never get a scholarship. You're not tall enough. You may be big, but you're not that tall. Don't do it. It's impossible, right? Do me a favor. You told me how to spell it. I wasn't too sure. That's why I asked you. <laughs> if you separate the M and the P, then add an apostrophe after the I, what does that spell? I'm possible. That's what the kids need to hear. That's what they need to believe. I'm possible. Anything I want, I can have. It's just the right amount of push, and it's the right amount of caring that I know you have that these kids need. Thank you so much for hearing me out today, and uh, that's all I got. <laughs>